In this video, we are going to discuss how variable interactions are modeled in CART decision trees. Now, before you watch this video, it's first helpful to watch the video, How to Write a Decision Tree as an Equation. And the reason is because it's very helpful for understanding how interactions are handled in CART if you first know how to express CART as an equation. Okay, so writing CART as an equation, as I mentioned, helps you understand how CART handles interactions and it also helps you understand why the interactions are considered to be local. Now the tree that we see on the right here has three terminal nodes, terminal node 1, 2, and 3, and it has three predicted values. So we have 23.944, 37.036, and 57.026. Now as a brief example, what is the predicted value of age days 22 in the cement amount equals 450? So what we can do is we can just follow down the tree. So is age day less than or equal to 21? No, it's 22. So we'll go to the right where age day is greater than 21. And is cement amount less than or equal to 355.95? Well, no, because cement amount now is 450. So we'll go to the right where 450 is greater than 355.95. And thus our predicted value is this average, which is just 57.026. Okay. So as described in the previous video, how to write a decision tree as an equation, we can write this tree that you see on the right using indicator functions. Now indicator functions allow us to navigate through the tree and they're defined here. So it's just i of x equals one if x is true and zero if x is false. So let's look at this purple portion of the tree here. Now, we have this portion of the equation is 23.944, which is just the average here, multiplied by the indicator for age day being less than or equal to 21. So we have this rule here. Now we can look at this portion of the tree. And we have 37.036, which is just the predicted value here. And then we have the path. So we have age day being greater than 21, that's here. And then we have some minimum being less than or equal to 355.95, which is here. Okay, so let's look at the path down to terminal node 3. And this part of the tree then is represented by 57.026, which is here. And then we have I of age day being greater than 21, and age day greater than 21 is here. And then we have I of some minimum being greater than 355.95, which is here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to plug in. We're going to redo this example and we'll just plug in. So for the purple portion of our equation, we plugged in age day equals 22. So is 22 less than or equal to 21? Well, no, that's false. So this function is going to have a whole value of zero. So we'll have zero here. Now we have our orange piece and is 22 greater than 21? Well, yes, so this takes a value of one. And is 450 less than or equal to 355.95? Well, no, so that's going to just be zero. So we have 37.036 multiplied by one multiplied by zero. Okay, now for the blue piece. So we plug in here, is 22 greater than 21? Well, this takes a value of one because 22 greater than 21 is true. And then is 450 greater than 355.95? Well, yes, so this will take a value also of one. So we have 57.026 multiplied by one, multiplied by one, and then that of course equals 57.026, which is, what the is the value that we had when we just informally went down the tree. Okay, so what does this have to do with interactions? Well, let's look at this portion of the equation. Now, these two terms that you see here, these are interaction terms. More specifically, there are two way interactions. And note how they're actually very similar to what you'll often have in regression. In regression, you usually have some type, you usually create your inter interaction terms by taking one variable and multiplying it by the other. Now, you don't always do that, and you, of course, you can define your interaction in any way that you'd like, but this is something that's often done. And then you try to estimate this coefficient. But if you look at what we have here on the left, this is actually a very similar form. We have a coefficient, we have our first variable, and then we have our second variable. 
It's just the difference here is that instead of using all of age day, we're going to only use part of it. And more specifically, when I say part of it, I just mean when age day is greater than 21. And the same thing will be true for a cement amount. We're no longer using all of it, we're just using part of it. And the part that we're using here is three is when it's when cement amount is less than or equal to 355.95. Okay. Now, the reason this is called local, again, another way to explain it would be the following. So think about the region where age day is greater than 21 and cement amount is less than or equal to 355.95. So that's actually just a region. And this interaction is only going to be used in that region. Now in a similar manner, this interaction term here, when age day is greater than 21 and the cement amount is greater than 355.95, well, this defines a different region. And that's why the target, that, or that's why the predicted value here changes. So this is kind of why we have the, the difference here, because these are just really just different regions of our data set. And the reason we call them local is, again, because they're just only, you know, certain specific areas as opposed to the entire space. To make the concept of global and local interactions a little more formal, for global, which we have an example here, here the same interaction is going to be used for all combinations of x1 and x2. And this type of interaction is not going to be used in CART decision trees. In CART, as we saw in the previous slide, the interactions are local and they're kind of this form. And the interaction here that you see is only used for certain values. And this is just when age day is greater than 21 and the cement amount is less than or equal to 355.95. Now CART is going to automatically find these interactions for you and now just to note here you can have local interactions and regression so here's just kind of a, a regression model that I just kind of made up and so here's our local interaction we have like this coefficient here this 10 for square feet when the house has been on the market for more than seven days and you can certainly add something like this to your model, but finding these local interactions when you're using classic regression may be especially difficult if the data set is large. So when you have a lot of variables, it's really not very feasible to go and try different combinations because one, you have to know you need to first choose the variables, but then you also need to choose things like the points where you want the interaction to be activated. And so in CART, the real advantage is, is that not only does it find the variables for you, but it also finds the regions for you. Because here we're just defining your own region manually. But here this is actually done for you automatically. So when you get to these larger data sets that are more complex, then you're going to need something to help you find these local interactions for you. And that's what CART helps you with. Okay, so... The decision tree that you saw in the video was built using CART software. We used the concrete strength data set, and this is accessible from the UCI machine learning repository. And the reference for this data set is given here, along with the author of the paper. Okay, so if you have any additional questions, then please feel free to contact us at support at salford-systems.com, and I will see you in the next video.